Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's episode of Hacker Tools, we will be looking at how you can set up your own XSS Hunter instance to find those sweet blind XSS vulnerabilities. Let's get going. Cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are extremely common and they are not to be underestimated. We have many types of them and sometimes they can occur in the dark, in places where you cannot see the result. Now, that is exactly what XSS Hunter can help us with. Now, what is XSS Hunter? Well, this tool allows you to find all kinds of cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So, there are many kinds, such as reflected, stored, but also blind XSS. And that is something that this tool is specializes in. Okay, how does this service work? Well, we host a specialized XSS probe, which is a payload, and when it fires, when it gets executed, then it will scan the page and send information over to the server and the server can then notify you via email, hey, your XSS payload has been triggered. Okay, but why do we need that and what is blind XSS? Well, oftentimes you have an XSS where you get the result back on the screen immediately or it gets stored and shown again on the screen. However, in some cases, such as, for example, with a contact page uh, where you can contact the support of a company, you can input some values and those values will be shown to uh, support personnel. However, you will never see that result. So if there is an XSS vulnerability there, then your alert may trigger, but you're not going to see it. The support personnel is going to see it. So there's no way for you to know whether that worked or not. Well, XSS Hunter allows you to have some payloads that when they get executed, they will connect back to the server and say, hey, your XSS triggered here. It scans the page and shows you the results. And that is exactly the power of XSS Hunter and what we are going to be installing together today. You can use the XSS Hunter website to remotely use the service. However, it might be beneficial for you to set up your own instance on your own server. Why? Well, if you host things yourself, you're going to have a more granular control over the configuration. Additionally, you can make sure that only you can view the results. Uh, the notifications you receive via email won't end up in a spam folder and uh, you won't miss out on executions if, for example, the XSS Hunter website were to go down or get blocked somewhere. Um, so there's reasons enough to get your own instance up and running and others would agree with you and that is why XSS Hunter Express was created. Now, let's set that up. So, first things you need. You are going to need a place to host your XSS Hunter instance. This is going to be a server that needs to, needs to be accessible through the internet over port 80 and port 443. Once you have your server, you also need a domain name. I bought a domain name for this purpose, which can be bought very, very cheap for less than a, a euro. And when I bought my domain, I configured it so that uh, the DNS has an A record in it that points the subdomain XSS to my server's IP address. So if I go to xss.mydomainname uh, and I host a web server on my server, then I would get, I would see the results there. Um, you can see on screen how that looks uh, on my configuration. Uh, for you, it might be a bit different. Uh, but yeah, tinker around with that until it works. Next up, we need to clone the repository from GitHub and go in that newly created directory. Once we're there, there's only one thing we need to configure and that is the docker-compose.yaml file. So open that file in your favorite text editor and let's get to work. There's only a couple of values that we need to change here. Um, so let's see, the first one being the version. For some reason, the uh, repository holds the value 3.9, uh, which is not a valid Docker Compose version. So let's change that to 3.3 .3 to make sure that everything is gonna work. Next up, we need to change the hostname value. And this field should contain the host name uh, that you just set up in DNS. Um, so the host name of your, uh, that's going to connect back to your server. Next up, you have the SSL contact email. 
Um, and we need to set that up because XSS Hunter will automatically use Let's Encrypt to, to generate an SSL certificate and it will also automatically keep it up to date. However, an email address is needed for that uh, certificate. And then lastly, we need to set up the mail settings. If you don't want to receive email notifications, you can leave these. However, if you want to get emails uh, when your XSS fired, then set up these by um, setting an email address there. I created a custom Gmail uh, for my XSS Hunter and uh, for the username, I set my email address, for the password, my password, and then the from and receiver email, I just kept the same as well. Uh, so just my email address. So uh, when a payload triggers, what is gonna happen is the server is gonna send a mail from my address to my address and I get a notification, hey, your XSS triggered. So that is how I have that set up and that works perfectly fine. However, you can play around with this and do whatever you want with it. But those are all the settings that you need to configure. Now we can start this bad boy up and that works in two simple steps. First of all, we're going to use docker-compose up-d PostgreSQL database to start up the, the database. Okay, once that has started up, we can start up XSS Hunter by running docker-compose up XSS Hunter Express. Note that if you're running this for the first time, it might take a while to finish because obviously Docker Compose uh, needs to pull in a couple of Docker images, create one, uh, build a new container, all that stuff. So give it some time, grab a coffee or do some hunting on integrity. Now, after that is finished, you will see this huge attention me message as shown on the screen now. Take note of this password that is shown here. Write it down, save it in your password manager because you will need that to authenticate with the admin panel of your XSS Hunter service. I also did not forget to blur out this password because by the time you read this, this instance is long gone. Um, so I know some of you were, are going to try that, but it won't work. Um, but that aside, is that all we need to do to set up XSS Hunter? And yes, it is all we need to do. Let's go to our uh, domain, so xss.our domain name, slash admin, and log in using the password we just created. And now we see that we are logged in and we are ready to have some fun. So next up, we're gonna try um, to test if our installation works on a very, very simple lab. So stay tuned for that. Let's see if we can exploit an XSS vulnerability on this extremely simple lab. Now, in this XSS game, we have a search engine and that search engine is vulnerable to XSS. Let's exploit this and to perform an XSS um, vulnerability, we need to have a payload and luckily XSS Hunter can help us with that. So if we go back to our XSS Hunter instance, uh, we see that there's a tab XSS payloads and from there we get a long list of XSS payloads. Now, nothing is stopping you from getting created, creative and creating your own. Um, however, in this case, this is a very simple lab. So let's just copy the basic payload and see how that fares on the lab. So we paste in our payload and search and all of a sudden a couple of things happen. First of all, we get an email and this email says, XSS payload triggered on and then the URL. Now that is great. We got instantly got a message. Hey, your XSS payload triggered. Cool. Now let's look at our XSS Hunter instance under the XSS payload fire reports tab. And here we see a report. We see that uh, a screenshot of the page. We see the URL. We can see the IP address and a whole lot more information on where our uh, payload has tr been triggered. And that is, that is amazing. We have all that information. Uh, and that is how XSS Hunter works. Note that in this case, uh, it isn't that useful because obviously this is a simple reflected XSS where we just already saw the page uh, coming back to us. However, in a case where this would be a blind XSS, then we obviously wouldn't be able to see what the other person who uh, trigger the XSS saw. So then the, the screenshot and all the information is incredibly useful. To recap, XSS Hunter is a powerful service that can help you find some crazy blind XSS vulnerabilities. In today's video, we looked at how to install it and um, we used it on a very basic lab. 
Now, if you would like to recommend a tool for us to cover in the next week, please be sure to let us know down below. Also, check out the previous articles and videos in the playlist and on our blog. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below, comment and uh, subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Thank you.